Dorian hit the U.S., it was nearly a Category 5 storm and one of the strongest to ever make landfall in this country. In its aftermath, housing is an urgent problem, and hundreds of thousands of households have applied for federal assistance. But there are big challenges around rebuilding and questions about the wisdom of doing so along parts of the coast. William Brangham has our report from Fort Myers Beach, Florida. One month after Hurricane Ian ripped through southwest Florida, communities here face wildly different realities. Some streets and homes in Lee County appear mostly untouched. Others are unrecognizable. Mangled roadways, entire blocks filled with debris, homes ripped to pieces inside and out. The terrifying hours of Ian's landfall are still fresh on the minds of many, like Adela Garay and her son Christian. So you jump out of the window and you're in the water, you're swimming. Yeah. yeah. Who live in the hard hit, low income, mostly Hispanic area of Harlem Heights, which is outside Fort Myers. Their family initially tried to ride out the storm, but the water inside began to rise, first to their ankles, then their knees, then up to their waists. We started to swim back all the way to the park in the backyard right there. You were swimming across your own yard. Yeah. They spent the night shivering in a small building in the park across the street. In the morning when they came home, everything was ruined. All of your belongings are gone. Yeah. I don't know if nothing, no keep, uh, I don't know if house, I don't know if car. They don't have insurance either. The restaurant where Adela's husband worked for decades was destroyed by Ian. The family is staying with some friends for now, five to a bedroom, and another friend is helping with home repairs. But as for what comes next... I don't know, maybe sleeping in the park, oh, I don't know. I'm really sorry. No good. I'm sorry. This is very problem for my house. I don't know when I read in my house. I don't know. Ian destroyed thousands of homes across the state, exacerbating what advocates say was an already dire housing crisis. Daniel Cruz is with Florida Rural Legal Services. There's no affordable housing uh, available. And when we say affordable housing, we're not talking about just helping individuals that need subsidized housing or public housing. I'm talking about affordable housing for the typical working class individual. You know, what would have been years back, a difficult situation is becoming a catastrophe. In Florida, the official death toll from Hurricane Ian stands at well over 100, the state's deadliest storm in almost a century. Hundreds of people remain in shelters and thousands are still without power. Total damage estimates are in the tens of billions of dollars. On Fort Myers Beach, which is near ground zero of the storm, the calm waters of the Gulf stand in stark contrast to the apocalyptic scenes on shore. This island community of about 6,000 suffered a devastating blow from Ian. At least 14 of the people who died in the storm were on Fort Myers Beach. Even the larger modern structures took a punch so oh the, my the kitchen was here. But many Everybody smaller, there, older homes were pulverized. Like a guest area. So your house stood here and here. Right. And where is it now? I found a little bit, one section of a wall in a, in a friend's house, most of the way down the block. Portions of it are two blocks down, almost in the bay. I imagine some of it is actually in the water because it was a complete washover. Wait, so the water was this high? And over our head by a few feet. Oh my Even gosh. over your head. Bill Veach lost almost his entire 90-year-old house to Ian. He and his wife have lived here for more than a decade, and two years ago, he was elected to the town council. A lot of people are very upset. They think things should be happening much faster than they are. Um, personally, being involved in it, I am really amazed at how fast things are working. But I think that now is a very difficult time for people emotionally, because this is where people are finally trying to come to the realization of what's next. You know, do they rebuild? Do they have to move away? Much further inland in Lee County, while the destruction isn't quite as severe, residents are still struggling with an uncertain future. 
So what's my next step here? I'm kind of on, on pins and needles as to what I need to do next. Uh, 84-year-old like Charles Matson lives in a North Fort Myers mobile home village. And like a lot of Floridians, he's made countless phone calls to his insurance company, but still hasn't had an adjuster visit. Boy, it looks like, like, a, like the whole skin of your house came off. Yeah. The surface of his roof was shorn off by Ian's winds. He spent two nights in a shelter, but is now back at home. Right now, I don't know what the costs are going to be, and uh, that's frustrating. I would just like to get started so I could maybe contact some contractors or something to start getting repairs made. You know, I don't want to have a blue roof forever. There's the physical loss. But Charles lost something far more dear right before Ian made landfall. About um, three, three or four days before the hurricane, my wife passed away. She was sick for quite a while. I basically was taking care of her for about 15 months. She was in and out of the hospital. So it was not a good time. Because of the storm, Charles spent more than a week not knowing what happened to his wife's remains. Are you doing okay? Mm -hmm. I see they got a tarp on you finally. Charles has visited a few yeah. times a week you know by Kathy McWhorter, a Meals on Wheels volunteer right. for the Fort Myers okay. nonprofit Community Cooperative. Kathy that says Charles is but one of many Floridians storm. whose lives were shaken, damaged, or lost by the violence of this storm. How's it going today? Hanging in there? People who are Hanging now left over? trying to pick up the pieces. Lee County's lost all these people, but all those people are lives and families and co-workers and friends, and it's, it's sad. But we will get through this. And there's a lot of people here to help, but it's not going to be a one and done because I've never seen anything like this in my life, ever. Judy, the official death toll from Hurricane Ian sits at 118 lives lost. But many people here believe that through what are known as indirect deaths, that that number will go much higher. Indirect deaths are, are people who died subsequent to the storm, like when the power was out and their oxygen monitor went down, or someone has a heart attack when they're clearing up debris. This has been increasingly looked at after recent disasters, and people think that once that number is truly known, that the death toll here could go easily into the thousands. Well, just so hard to even think about that. So, William, we saw in your piece that elderly man struggling with his insurance company. That has to be an enormous headache for so many homeowners there. It, it is a huge problem, and even though there is an army of insurance adjusters across the state, the demand is still so high that people are frustrated, like we saw from that gentleman. The, the bigger issue here is the issue of cost. Insurance rates in Florida are as expensive as they are anywhere in the country. And that's not just because of the, the storms that keep coming through here. It's also, according to the industry, because of fraud and of abuse in the system. The issue with insurance, though, is also there's a larger, more existential question here, which is how do you insure people when you never know when the next storm is going to come? Climate change is going to keep coming. Sea levels are going to keep going up. How do you equitably insure people in places that are this vulnerable? I mean, the private insurance industry has looked at this market and said, thanks, but no thanks. That leaves largely the government. That's either the federal government or here in Florida, the state government running their own insurance programs. But those two programs are either in serious financial jeopardy or are heading for a financial cliff. And so it's just a very, very thorny public policy issue here. And, and William, it, it raises another question, which is given uh, the price hikes that you've just described, given the inevitability of big storms in the future, is anybody there talking about not staying, about leaving Florida? Uh, you know, Judy, we've asked everyone we've talked to that question, and to a person, doesn't matter if they lost a few shingles on their house or their entire house, nobody is leaving. I mean, people who love Florida love Florida, and that's what's keeping them around here. Again, the, the bigger question is, does it make sense for the government to be encouraging people and signaling to people that it's okay to stay here. I mean, every time these roads are cleaned and new power lines get strung up and new sewer systems are put in, that is the government saying, this is okay to live here, rebuild. 
And it's just a question is as climate change intensifies and there is this potential steady parade of monster storms coming from the Gulf right over there, how do you allow that process to go forward? And I asked the local councilman who lives here and his argument was that better building codes is the solution. And certainly there are houses here that took a direct hit and they survived, businesses and houses. They made it through the storm. The problem is, is that to build your house up high and to build it like a fortress costs a lot of money. And the problem then is that the wealthy can afford to do that and can come here and build or stay here and build, whereas the poorer residents of this community cannot. And so that kind of progress fundamentally changes a community. And many researchers who study this whole process of how we build or not build in vulnerable areas say that this process, which is seemingly favoring wealthy people, is not a smart way to go about it. That we have to find a better way of figuring out how and where we allow people to live in vulnerable places. But Ian will contribute to that debate, but it's by no means going to be a settled issue. Yeah, a lot of tough decisions to be made in the months and the years to come. William Brangham uh, reporting from Florida. Thank you, William. Thanks, Judy.